Well, hey guys, many of you probably have heard Jimmy Buffett sadly passed away from Merkel cell carcinoma. And in today's video, we're gonna talk all about Merkel cell carcinoma. What the heck is this? I've gotten a lot of questions. Please talk about the skin cancer. Merkel cell carcinoma is a type of skin cancer. It is rare. It's described as aggressive because it has a tendency to spread to other parts of your body. And it also has a tendency to recur after treatment. The Merkel cell is a special cell type in your skin and it's responsible for a light touch. Merkel cell carcinoma arises within this specialized cell type in your skin. Now I have a whole playlist here on YouTube of all different types of skin cancers like basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Merkel cell carcinoma is very rare in comparison to these other skin cancers. In the US, about 3,000 new cases are diagnosed every year. Now while it's rare, cancer records actually show that we are seeing more and more cases of Merkel cell carcinoma in recent years and there are a few reasons why this might be. First of all, Merkel cell carcinoma is a skin cancer that in the majority of cases occur in individuals over the age of 50. We have a larger population of adults over the age of 65 and that percentage of people is expected to increase in future years. Furthermore, adults over the age of 65 are unlikely to have a history of protecting their skin from the sun. Back in the day, people were not habitually putting sunscreen on and they weren't as educated, aware of the need to wear sunscreen and protect their skin from the sun, seeking shade and sun protective clothing. Nearly everyone who gets Merkel cell carcinoma is an older adult, at least over the age of 50, typically with pale skin. While it is an aggressive skin cancer, treatment advances in more recent years are helping patients with Merkel cell carcinoma live longer. And importantly, if Merkel cell carcinoma is caught early and diagnosed early, it actually has a better prognosis overall, meaning you have a better outcome, better chance of surviving if it is caught early. But fortunately, when it comes to skin cancers, it's something that pops up on our skin and we see it. So what should you look out for in terms of Merkel cell carcinoma? Now it's typically a pink or red, maybe sometimes purplish bump that for the most part happens on areas of the body that have seen a lot of sun exposure throughout your lifetime. The majority of cases happen on the head and neck. That might be your scalp, it might be your ear, your cheek, your nose, but your forearms, the backs of your hands, they too see a lot of sun exposure and we frequently see cases of Merkel cell carcinoma at those locations. The skin lesion of Merkel cell carcinoma, this bump that appears out of nowhere, it often is mistaken for a pimple, a cyst, a sore, and it's not usually painful. It is typically painless. For that reason, a lot of patients don't necessarily feel so worried about it initially because they think, oh, it's probably just a pimple. It's probably just a cyst. It's not really bothering me. Uh, I'm not gonna go see the doctor about it. Or people are just not able to get in to see a doctor. That is definitely a common scenario, unfortunately. But if caught early, that is when you have the best chance of a better outcome because it's less likely to have spread deeper. The other hallmark feature of Merkel cell carcinoma is that it tends to grow pretty quickly. Like all of a sudden you have this bump and over the next couple of months, it gets noticeably bigger. The vast majority of cases of Merkel cell carcinoma happen after the age of 50, with the majority of cases being in adults in their 70s and 80s. However, there are rare cases of Merkel cell carcinoma in young adults and children. These cases, oddly enough, tend to happen on the torso more so than the head and neck. While Merkel cell cell carcinoma is a heck of a lot more common in people who have a paler skin type that tends to burn or freckle easily. It can occur in people who have skin of color who don't burn easily. Initially, it is painless, but as it persists, it can start to itch, be a little uncomfortable, sore. It can also start to bleed, ooze, and ulcerate. Three things are thought to play a major role in Merkel cell carcinoma, and they probably all come together to lead to this rare skin cancer. The first is sunlight. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun is known to cause skin cancers. It is a known carcinogen. The way ultraviolet radiation causes skin cancers is that it damages the DNA in skin cells. People who have a pale skin type and who have seldom ever protected their skin from the sun are a lot more susceptible to this damage. Every time you go out in the sun and you're not protecting your skin from the sun, those UV rays, they hit the skin and they damage the DNA in your skin cells. And your body has the ability to clear out that damage. 
damage. However, over time, the damage accumulates to the point where your body can no longer clear it out. And what then starts to happen is that those cells start to change. They start to acquire mutations that give them advantages and cause them to hang around and not be cleared out. And over time, those mutations tip them over to become a cancer cell. And a cancer cell can grow in an unlimited fashion and can move around, spread outside the boundaries of where cells are supposed to be and spread to other body sites. And that is what can happen with Merkel cell carcinoma. It's crystal clear that ultraviolet radiation is playing a strong role in Merkel cell carcinoma, similar to other skin cancers of other cell types in your skin. In addition to the fact that the majority of cases of Merkel cell carcinoma happen on sun exposed sites where the skin was seldom ever protected from the sun, another clue that it's ultraviolet radiation is if we just look at the areas of the world where we see the most cases of Merkel cell carcinoma. In the United States specifically, Hawaii has some of the most cases of Merkel cell carcinoma, and they actually have the highest strength of UV exposure of any state in the US. Worldwide, Australia has the most cases of Merkel cell carcinoma, which should not come as a surprise to anyone because they have very strong ultraviolet radiation in Australia that they're exposed to, and they have some of the highest rates of all types of skin cancers worldwide. The other clue that ultraviolet radiation plays a role in Merkel cell carcinoma comes from patients actually who have psoriasis who receive a treatment called PUVA. PUVA stands for Sorolin plus UVA. It's a special type of treatment using a controlled dose of ultraviolet radiation in combination with a photosensitizing agent to treat psoriasis, to suppress that abnormal inflammatory response. But people who have undergone this therapy with UVA, which primarily in our day-to-day -day life is coming from the sun, that's where we get our exposure. But you know, sometimes we use it in a controlled fashion to treat skin diseases. Patients with psoriasis who had this treatment, they have a hundred times greater risk of Merkel cell carcinoma. Now, if you have psoriasis and you have received PUVA therapy, don't panic. Merkel cell carcinoma is still very rare. The second factor playing a major role in one's risk overall for Merkel cell carcinoma is the immune system. A weakened immune system is a common theme amongst people who have Merkel cell carcinoma. Your immune system is responsible for preventing you from getting sick, from preventing you from getting all sorts of diseases. When your immune system becomes weak, then you are a lot more susceptible to all types of diseases, including many cancers, especially skin cancers. Anything that weakens your immune system can increase your risk for all types of skin cancers. As you get older, your immune system starts to weaken. That's just part of normal aging. So once you get over the age of 65, your immune system is no longer as robust at clearing out damaged cells. So you are even more vulnerable to, again, all types of skin cancers. But then some people take certain medications that suppress their immune system, specifically people who have had an organ transplant. They have to take medications that suppress their immune system so that their immune system doesn't reject the organ transplant. But those medications put them at heightened risk for skin cancer. So they have to undergo more regular skin exams from a board certified dermatologist to screen for skin cancers. They are an at risk group for Merkel cell carcinoma as well as other skin cancers. If you have an underlying medical condition that leaves your immune system weak, that too can put you at risk for skin cancers, including Merkel cell carcinoma. For example, patients who have HIV or AIDS. The third factor is a virus called the Merkel cell polyoma virus. This was discovered in 2008. I was gonna say recently, but then I was like, well, 2008, it's not that recent. And it's thought that the combination of UV rays damaging the skin plus immunosuppression leads to changes in this virus that maybe activate certain things that trigger overall the formation of Merkel cell carcinoma. Roughly 60 to 80% of Americans have Merkel cell polyoma virus, and for the most part, it doesn't cause any problems. It's thought that we acquire it when we are young children by the age of five. And for most people, it does not cause any disease. But it's thought that in the setting of prolonged unprotected sun exposure with all the UV ray damage, plus immunosuppression in your older adult years, this virus in some people can change and 
be associated with this cancer. Interestingly enough, though, that's not the case worldwide. Like if you look at Merkel cell carcinoma in Australia, their cancers that they're removing, their Merkel cell carcinoma cancers that they're cutting out of people, they're not finding uh, this virus to the same extent as we are here in the US. Regardless, it's clear that the immune system plays a vital role and newer therapies that help the immune system target the cancer cells are where you know treatment is really going and has really helped uh, these patients live longer with this cancer. So it's typically diagnosed on a skin exam. Your dermatologist also should be feeling lymph nodes that are close to the tumor to see if they are enlarged. Uh, that might be a clue that you have some spread to neighboring lymph nodes. Your dermatologist is going to remove part of it or all of it and send it to the lab to be examined under a microscope by a pathologist. And that is how the diagnosis is made. If the pathologist says, yes, this is Merkel cell carcinoma, you may also need to undergo um, some sort of evaluation of your lymph nodes, either what's called a sentinel lymph node biopsy or a fine needle aspiration to see if there is Merkel cell carcinoma that has spread there. In addition to that, it's possible you may need some body imaging like an MRI or a PET scan to look to see if the cancer has spread to other body sites. Now, these things that I've just outlined here, these are not done as treatment, but rather they are done as part of staging. Staging is a way to describe how extensive the cancer has spread. The treatment path for Merkel cell carcinoma depends a lot on not only the stage of cancer, but also your background health, the size of the tumor, many factors go into determining a treatment plan for patients with this cancer because in addition to it being one that can easily spread, it's also one that has a high risk of recurrence. Stage zero and three likely will be treated with excision, cutting it out. The goal here is to cut out the tumor as well as a rim of uh, normal appearing skin around the tumor uh, that may have little bits of tumor cells in it. However, depending on the size and the location of your tumor, you may need to undergo a special type of skin surgery called Mohs surgery. With Mohs surgery, they go in and they take out um, sections of surrounding skin at a time. And each, each section that they take out, they look at under the microscope to see if there's still cancer cells there. And the idea there being that they're removing the cancer cells but sparing you any uninvolved tissue. However, you may un need to undergo surgery to remove the lymph nodes. Now again, Merkel cell carcinoma is one that has a high recurrence risk after treatment. To reduce that risk, you may need additional therapy called adjuvant therapy. And in the case of Merkel cell carcinoma, it may be radiation therapy. Now for some people, depending on their tumor size and their background health, excision, removal of the tumor may not actually be possible. Radiation therapy alone may actually be what's offered. Some patients undergo what's called palliative therapy. Palliative therapy is not actually treating the cancer, but rather treating the symptoms. If someone is in really poor health and not a good candidate for surgery, their tumor is very extensive, this may be the root of, of treatment palliative and that may include radiation therapy or chemotherapy to shrink the tumor and alleviate painful symptoms. When the cancer has spread elsewhere, immunotherapy may be offered. Avilimab is a type of immunotherapy that basically, you know, it works to help your immune system attack these cancer cells better. Take home points from this video, Merkel cell carcinoma is a rarer skin cancer, but the number of these that we are diagnosing here in the US is actually increasing, likely due to the increase in the aging population. Merkel cell carcinoma most often happens in a background of a lot of sun damage coupled with immunosuppression, either related to your age, background medical history, medications you may be taking, and the Merkel cell polyomavirus that many of us have in the body also plays a role. It's quite clear that UV rays from the sun play a major role in Merkel cell carcinoma, and unprotected sun exposure throughout your lifetime is a risk factor, especially if you have a pale skin type that burns easily or freckles. I say this all the time, but protecting your skin from the sun is one of the most proactive things that you can do to keep your skin healthy long term, not just to prevent 
at the signs of skin aging, skin thinning, discoloration, but also to reduce your risk of skin cancers. Protecting your skin from the sun involves wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen when you're going to be outdoors, wearing sleeves, hats, sunglasses, sun protective clothing, seeking shade. Also stay away from the tanning beds. That's gonna hit you with a mega dose of UVA that's gonna annihilate the DNA in your skin cells and put you at increased risk for all types of skin cancer and premature skin aging. You know, it makes me so angry when I see people spreading misinformation on online that the sun does not cause skin cancer. It just makes me so angry that this is where we are at this point, that social media is being used to mislead people on something so basic that we know and is so well established that the sun does cause skin cancer. The sun damages DNA in your skin cells, mutates those cells and causes skin cancers basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma, and Merkel cell carcinoma, all related to UV damage from the sun. You can enjoy the outdoors and derive the benefits of being outside while still protecting your skin from the sun. And yes, your ancestors did get skin cancers and they did die of skin cancers. The first skin cancers have been described back to ancient Egypt, but why are we seeing so many more skin cancers now than we ever did in the past? because we are living longer. A huge chunk of our population is over the age of 65, and that chunk of the population is expected to grow. That is a major reason why skin cancer is increasing. Like I said, I have a whole playlist of signs of skin cancer not to miss. I talk about all of the different types of skin cancer, as well as a video on how to do your own at home self skin check to look for new worrisome skin signs that could indicate an underlying skin cancer. So check those videos out. I'll put one of them on the end slate. You can watch next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.